the military and tactical might of the Japanese Empire during World War II was extraordinary and relentless. Its territorial expansion, reflected in this map, rivaled that of other major powers of the time. However, this formidable force was not enough to halt the advance of the Americans and the Russians. Similar to the fate of Germany, Japan was devastated by the Allies. The surrender of the Land of the Rising Sun in August and September 1945 was not solely, as you might believe, due to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Behind these events lies a series of improvised strategic decisions that led the Empire to catastrophe and changed the course of the war. It's May 8, 1945, and the world celebrates Germany's surrender, an event marking the end of the conflict in Europe. However, World War II has not yet reached its final conclusion. The Empire of the Sun stubbornly resists, defying expectations of a swift resolution. Meanwhile, in the United States, there is intense debate about the use of a new devastating weapon that could change the course of history. Some high-ranking American military officials expressed opposition to the use of the atomic bomb, arguing that Japan would have capitulated if certain conditions had been guaranteed, such as the preservation of Emperor Hirohito, a central figure in Japanese culture and politics. However, at this particular moment in the war, many fear that an American invasion will result in a high human cost. During the Battle of Okinawa between April and June 1945, severe losses are recorded, with thousands of Allied soldiers dead or wounded, and another immense number of Japanese casualties. The persistent resistance of the Empire of the Rising Sun is manifested in numerous suicide attacks by kamikaze pilots, as you will see below. In July 1945, the United States, along with the United Kingdom and China, demanded the surrender of the Japanese army in the Potsdam Declaration. The Allies laid out a clear path to peace, or, in their own words, immediate and absolute annihilation. This demand made it clear that there would be no room for negotiated terms of resolution, but rather that the path to reconciliation lay in the complete submission of the enemy. For the Japanese, Accepting these impositions was a severe blow to their national honor and the image of their imperial divinity. The idea of surrendering unconditionally was seen as an intolerable humiliation, leading many leaders to consider extreme alternatives rather than submitting to such terms. Despite its apparent intransigence, Japan secretly sought mediation from the USSR, still neutral in the conflict. Meanwhile, the Soviets, committed to previous agreements with other allies, planned silent attacks against Japanese troops in Manchuria and other key areas. On the other hand, the Americans dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Although devastating, their impact was not the sole factor that led the Japanese to surrender. The Empire's expansionist policy, which had been reaping conquest after conquest since the 19th century, proved to be its fatal flaw during the first half of the 20th century. Among all defense and attack fronts, Japan's main strategic mistake during World War II was its attempt to conquer China. Despite having a modern and well-trained army, the Japanese underestimated Chinese resistance and the difficulty of controlling such a vast and diverse country. Initially, they made significant advances along the urbanized coastal areas where their military superiority was evident compared to the poorly equipped and trained Chinese forces. However, once the conflict moved into rural regions of China, the situation became more complicated for Japan. The rugged geography and vast territories hindered logistics and supply for Japanese troops, which were not prepared to fight in this type of terrain. The invasion of China only resulted in a prolonged and costly war for the empire. With their sights set on conquest, the Japanese realized they needed to secure a reliable source of vital raw materials, such as oil and steel, to keep their machinery running. To meet this urgent demand for resources, 
Japan considered two strategic options, attacking Russia for the vast reserves of Siberia and Central Asia, or heading to the Pacific to seize the rich territories of Malaya, Indonesia, and Southeast Asia, mostly occupied by European powers at that time. The first option, attacking Russia, was quickly dismissed due to the fresh memory of the conflict with the Soviet Union in 1939. This border dispute, which had culminated in a humiliating defeat for Japan, discouraged Japan from considering aggression against the Soviet Union as a viable strategic path. The experience at Kalkin Goal served as a vivid reminder of the consequences of underestimating Soviet power. Aware of the potential threat posed by the Russians, Japan chose not to provoke them and sought a less risky route to expansion. Thus, they decided on the second alternative, attacking the Pacific. This choice was based on the recognition of the superiority of the Imperial Japanese Navy and the belief that they could gain a strategic advantage by confronting the European powers occupied in their struggle against Germany. However, this maneuver put them on a collision course with the United States, whose interests and territories in the Pacific represented a significant obstacle to Japan's expansionist objectives. This move would mark the beginning of a conflict that would change the course of world history. The Pacific War had begun, and within it, Japan made the second mistake that would lead to its defeat. The Battle of the Philippines. Japan's strategy during World War II was not aimed at conquering the United States, but at eliminating its influence in the archipelago to secure access to the region's resources. Their goal was to neutralize the Allies' Pacific fleet, conquer and fortify the islands, and then resist any American attempts to retake them. During this confrontation, the Allied fleet demonstrated its numerical and technical superiority, sinking three enemy aircraft carriers and shooting down hundreds of Japanese aircraft. Under the plan of Operation Z, Admiral Minichi Koga had devised a trap to lure and sink American ships near the Palau Islands, but his death and the capture of key documents by the Americans thwarted the strategy. Vice Admiral Jisaburo Ozawa had to improvise a new ambush, choosing the Marianas Islands as the battlefield, where the Allies were about to launch an invasion. This series of tactical errors and setbacks further contributed to the decline of the Imperial Japanese Navy. The Battle of the Philippine Sea was a key victory for the United States, consolidating its naval dominance in the Pacific. Although the original plan of the Imperial Japanese Navy had merit, several factors, such as the improvisation in Operation Zed and the inexperience of the embarked pilots, led to disasters. The aircraft carrier Taiho, the Empire's first large carrier, sank after being hit by torpedoes and exploding due to gasoline vapors stored on board. Japan lost five ships and suffered damage to six others, including the battleship Haruna and the cruisers Mogami and Maya. These defeats resulted in the deaths of 4,000 Islander sailors and the destruction of 480 aircraft. The United States, on the other hand, suffered the sinking of 123 aircraft and 109 casualties, as well as damage to two battleships. After the Philippines, the Empire attempted to weaken the American Pacific Fleet to gain a six-month window for its conquests, but their plan was flawed. What followed was the prelude to a bold and desperate attack. The Land of the Rising Sun aimed this time to inflict damage on American territory. Their armament capacity was not sufficient to reach the United States silently and with a chance of victory, so they chose to attack the nearest target they had from Asia, the island of Hawaii. The third fatal error that the Empire committed in the war and pushed it much closer to its definitive surrender was none other than the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Although the surprise attack by the Japanese Imperial Navy is often considered nearly perfect, there were critical errors that allowed the United States to regain momentum in the following months. On the other hand, 
the Allies missed several opportunities to detect the Japanese siege due to incorrect communication and inadequate preparation. One of the key errors was the choice of Admiral Chuichi Nagumo to lead the bold attack. Despite his seniority in the Navy, Nagumo lacked experience in aerial tactics, which was puzzling considering the more traditional naval prowess preferred by Admiral Yamamoto, the Empire's maritime strategist. Nagumo's cautious temperament clashed with Yamamoto's boldness, and his conservative decisions would later be criticized for the shortcomings of the attack on Pearl Harbor and the loss of four Japanese aircraft carriers in the Battle of Midway, which we will discuss later. Additionally, the bloody resistance on each island reclaimed by the United States proved counterproductive. Although Japan hoped to exhaust the Allies' will with high losses, this only served to increase the determination of the Americans and strengthen their commitment to the conflict in the Pacific region. Japan's initial strategy in the region was affected by several setbacks that changed the course of the war. Although the initial invasions, including that of the Philippines, were successful, the attack on Pearl Harbor failed to achieve its main objective, neutralizing the American Pacific Fleet. The aircraft carriers, fundamental pillars of the fleet, survived the attack and remained intact. Although the siege on the American harbor was precise and spectacular, ultimately it did not weaken the United States. On the contrary, it enraged them and strengthened their resolve. Japan decided to continue its conquest in the Pacific relying on its naval superiority. However, the crucial battle on Midway Island completely changed the landscape. The Americans, anticipating Japanese movements, ambushed the Imperial fleet and managed to sink its four main aircraft carriers. This victory was a turning point, balancing the naval game between both powers and allowing the Allies to accelerate the production of new armaments while Japan lagged behind. The fourth mistake of the Japanese was the Battle of Midway, The operation was based on erroneous assumptions by Commander Yamamoto. He believed that by weakening the American aircraft carriers in the Pacific and luring them into battle, he could achieve a decisive victory. The choice of Midway Islands aimed to provoke a confrontation, not to conquer the island itself, as holding it would have been difficult for the Empire. Although Yamamoto was confident of a Japanese victory, even by destroying the U.S. Pacific Fleet, Japan could not match America's production capacity. The Battle of the Coral Sea demonstrated that the Navy was quickly learning to face the Japanese Armada. Although the Empire initially had more aircraft carriers, their failure on the island changed the course of the war in favor of the U.S. After Midway, the Japanese lost control of the Pacific and faced an unstoppable Allied offensive, advancing from island to island with little opposition. The loss of that crucial territory in the archipelago marked the beginning of the end for the territorial ambitions of the land of the rising sun in the Pacific. As the islands under Japanese control were liberated one after another, including the Philippines, the empire found itself amidst increasing pressure. The onset of bombings against imperial territory signaled the definitive tide change in the war. With the loss of their advantage at sea after Midway, the islanders were forced to fight an increasingly desperate defensive battle to delay the American advance. As their territories were snatched away one by one, the land of the rising sun suffered an agonizing decline, which the Soviet Union exploited to deliver the final blow. The fifth and final mistake that led the Japanese to defeat was allowing the Russian invasion of Manchuria. For many experts, Japan did not capitulate solely because of the atomic bombs, but also due to the Soviet invasion of Manchuria. American historiography has tended to attribute the merit exclusively to their country, minimizing the role of the USSR in the event. In reality, Japan chose to surrender to the United States as the less humiliating option. This conflict unfolded in the context of a historical rivalry between Russia and Japan for control of the Far East dating back to the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 and 1905. After decades of tensions and border skirmishes, 
The Operation August Storm was carefully planned by the Soviet Union and mobilized over 1.7 million soldiers and a huge amount of war equipment for this attack. Under the direction of Marshal Alexander Vasilevsky, the Red Army launched a coordinated offensive from three fronts in Siberia, encircling and defeating the Japanese Kwantung Army in Manchuria. In addition to direct military pressure on Japan, the move undermined the Japanese leadership's confidence in their ability to resist the Allies. The Soviet invasion exacerbated internal tensions within the imperial government and increased pressure on leaders to seek a diplomatic resolution to the conflict. Faced with growing certainty of total defeat, Japan surrendered on August 15, 1945, bringing an end to World War II. The rest of the story is well known. It is important to specify, finally, that the Japanese knew that the Soviet Union would not allow a monarchic government on the island, but would destroy the imperial family. That was how Japan made an agreement with the United States, in which they ensured surrendering to them unconditionally. The generals would be prosecuted, but the emperors would be protected from international trials. Ultimately, the land of the rising sun surrendered out of fear that the Soviet Union would have a significant influence at the peace conference and force the emperor to abdicate. That concludes the documentary. We invite you to share this video so that more people can delve into these lesser known details about the defeat of the Japanese Empire in World War II. Thank you for joining us in this installment of Military History.